Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a collection of some of the most prestigious 3D Mario games that has fairly recently come out on the Nintendo Switch. Wait, no. As it turns out, it's basically been a year ago now. Well, so much for catching the trend. Ah, who am I kidding? In my heart, Super Mario Galaxy is always in season. It's actually been almost three years since I last revisited this game for a challenge, though there was that whole Let's Play thing on the second channel. Anyway, I wanted another excuse to play this game, so after much deliberation, I decided that the challenge we're going to be tackling today shall be the following. Is it possible to beat Super Mario Galaxy while permanently crouching? Before we start tearing through space, we do need to establish what exactly it is we mean by permanently crouching. On the most basic level, that just means we need to hold down the crouch button during all gameplay, with one small exception that allows us to briefly let go of it in midair for the purpose specifically of ground pounding. Aside from that, we can't let go of it. Here on the 3D All-Stars version of the game, that button would be ZL. That however, in my opinion, would be a relatively weak rule by itself because there are actually a lot of ways you can still be holding down ZL, but not bind yourself to crouching, even slightly, really. For example, taking damage under certain circumstances will stop Mario from crouching, even while you hold the button the whole time. Another way you could potentially subvert it would be simply sliding down a wall all the way to the ground, which also interrupts crouching. To counter those sorts of abuses, I'll also be implementing a more nebulous rule that we have to uphold the spirit of a permanent crouching challenge. So no exploits that just result in us running around like normal while still technically holding the crouch button. So something like the previously mentioned exploits would run afoul of that spirit of the challenge rule. Whereas some things that are also a bit borderline, but in my opinion would not run afoul of the rule, would be things like power-ups that fundamentally transform your movement, or the brief standing up that Mario will generally do when you walk him off a cliff while crouching. Alright, now that we know exactly what our parameters are, let's get started. Our odyssey through the stars starts at the Star Festival. This is a completely danger and obstacle free area, so obviously it's no problem for us to get through. The real question is how long is it going to take? As I'm sure many of you have expected, while in crouching mode, speed is not exactly Mario's strong suit. The way I see it, you have two real options of movement. Either you waddle along at a snail's pace, which if you haven't ever tried doing for a significant duration, you don't fully appreciate just how slow it is. As a point of comparison, cresting this first hill by waddling took Mario about 40 seconds to achieve. In my normal Super Mario Galaxy Let's Play, it took a bit less than 10 seconds, and that was a far from maximum efficiency route. So yeah, we're looking at 4, maybe 5 times slower than normal. Not great. If you don't want to die due to sheer boredom, backflips are a far better bet. Of course, I didn't actually use them here because I'm a fool, apparently. No, I waited until the next planet before I touched that tool. Speaking of, whoo, that next planet sure is something. Welcome to the gateway to the starry sky, a peaceful planet inhabited by nice little fluffy bunnies that want to destroy you. These bunnies are here to fulfill a very important purpose. They ensure no one can escape this planet without being at least somewhat competent at the game's controls. The way they go about this is forcing you to catch them in order for you to progress. Now these bunnies are pretty quick, far too fast to have even a slight chance of catching by waddling. Backflips on the other hand do have the speed to make up some ground against our bouncy bunny friends. I never said they had the maneuverability though. Here's the thing, while the backflip is certainly much faster than the waddle, it's also a bit of a hassle to control. If you want to get somewhere with backflips, you must first be facing the opposite direction of where you want to go. You then have to press the jump button specifically without touching the analog stick, because moving away from where you're trying to go would be counterproductive, while moving toward where you want to go would make you face that direction and ruin your backflip. Anyway, let's assume you lined it up properly and then jumped without pressing the analog stick. If you just sit back and don't do anything now, 
you will perform a respectable enough backflip. You'll get some great height and very unimpressive distance. If it's distance you're after, you'll want to slam that analog stick in the direction you want to go as soon as you jump, but not a moment sooner. So just jump and hold the analog stick in the direction I want to go the whole way through, right? Wrong. If you hold it down the whole way through your jump, then when you land, Mario will turn around and face the direction you were just going, which means if you need to do a second backflip, oh, looks like you're jumping the wrong way. No, what you have to do is let go of the analog stick at some point before you land. Ideally, right before you land so you get the maximum distance out of your jump. <sighs> and that is how you achieve good, relatively fast horizontal movement with backflips. Congratulations, you can now travel in a perfectly straight line like an absolute champ. Okay, that's great, but let's just say for example that maybe you're chasing some bunnies that run away from you, but don't do so in perfectly straight lines. Well, in the backflip itself, you can press the analog stick in any direction, and Mario will go that way. Of course, the more the direction you correct in midair for differs from the direction the backflip was initially going in, the more inefficient your horizontal traversal is going to be. If you really want to turn, then what you're going to have to do is when you land, face more in the opposite direction you want to go in, and then from there the natural, preferred motion of the backflip will again be your ally. Sounds simple enough. Here's the thing though, successfully executing enough of those often turn involving backflips in a row to catch one of these dodging and weaving bunnies is quite frankly an absurd task. And before all of you comment it, no, you can't just join in player 2 and freeze the bunnies. As it turns out, Player 2 actually isn't all that useful in this game, and most things that would be amazing to freeze, you can't actually freeze. What you can do is launch Starbits at the bunnies, which does stun them for a bit, after pushing them in a direction that is 9 times out of 10 going to be away from you. So yeah, that's not exactly a great tactic. More of a wash, really. But that's just it. As it turns out, what you need to do is wash the bunnies. No, don't worry, I haven't lost my mind, not yet at least. It's basic Mario science, really. The bunnies move slower in water, while we do not. That means this one pond is the perfect place to lure them for capture. So what I would do is subtly and patiently guide the bunnies across the planet by waddling around until I heard the sound of water splashing beneath their feet. Then you turn around and start flipping. The method still isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world to achieve, but, it is possible, which is all we need to speak with Rosalina, unlock the ability to spin, and be unleashed on the rest of this honestly fairly easy level. We're brought to the Comet Observatory, which, spoiler alert, because we're never going to talk about it again, is never going to be a difficult place to traverse, even in this challenge, and head for the Terrace and Good Egg Galaxy. Most of the planets for the first star aren't that bad. This rock planet is a bit annoying, since often it's not a great option to waddle across the muddy parts, since they make you go even slower. I know, I didn't think it was possible either, but here we are. It's a lot easier though if you just destroy the boulders. That's all small potatoes though, compared to the grand omelets that is the Dino Piranha boss fight, where my first encounter went something like this. Yeah, as it turns out, backflips don't seem to quite have the maneuverability and speed to juke this piranha. Which is a problem, because if we can't juke the thing off us, then we can't beat it, and if we can't beat it, then this challenge is dead before it's really even begun. I did have a bit of a glimmer of hope when I managed to backflip over the creature, but I wasn't able to reliably replicate that. What I instead opted to pursue was more of a pay-to-win approach. No, don't worry, Super Mario Galaxy didn't suddenly sprout microtransactions and loot boxes. What I'm referring to are entities that we have a interesting past with here at Semicraft Gaming. Starbits. Yes, I know, an alliance between me and Starbits seems unlikely, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And in this case, Starbits are specifically interesting to us because of the fact that you can chuck them at the Dino Piranha for a small stun which unfortunately turns out to be an extremely small, borderline worthless stun. So yeah, that's not exactly great, but what if we had dozens of those stuns? Gooda Galaxy is a very starbit rich place. If we really focus on gathering as many starbits as we can, then we can accrue well over 200 starbits by the time we face Dino Piranha 
with such a massive stash, we can machine gun the piranha plant while casually waddling around behind it and getting in those tailspins without much resistance. And with that, we have acquired star number two. We should probably try to get through at least the next few a bit faster, given how long this video already is and we are only about 1 30th of the way through the game. Alright, here we go. Good at Galaxy's second star is much easier than its first, but does start showing us that strangely shaped planets can be really annoying to backflip around. Good at Galaxy's third features another boss fight, but this one is slower based and projectile based. As long as you backflip in the correct directions, it's not too bad. Honeyhive's first star gives us access to the bee mushroom, which lets us fly, which makes the level quite easy and much less annoying to traverse. Honeyhive's second has lots of ground pounding, which we have already established as legal and goes by relatively simply. Honeyhive's third has a boss fight, but that fight also features a bee mushroom, so it actually plays out almost normally. Loop to Loop Galaxy plays exactly normal. And what do you know, that's our 8th star, so now we can face our first Bowser level. Bowser Jr.'s Robot Reactor. The first planet here requires some forethought as to how you're going to get the bolts to break the cage, but if you plan it right, you basically just have to backflip in a straight line, which really isn't that bad. The real meat here is the giant robot Megaleg. The toughest part of this fight is this transition here, from the gear section to the head. You're under fire from Bolt Bills here, and during certain parts of this section don't really have access to your best evasive maneuver, the backflip. This is because the gravitational fields of the different parts of Megaleg interfere with each other here, and make backflipping from certain locations leave you basically where you started. That being said, sometimes backflipping isn't the answer, and a nice little waddle will do the trick just fine. When it comes to actually freeing the star, as it turns out, backflips are pretty good for that. So once we're up on the head proper, we can get it problem. Now that we have the fountain open, we can take on the first star in Space Junk Galaxy, which is primarily pulse star based and therefore not too bad. The second star involves picking up and throwing these shells. Unfortunately, as soon as you pick one up, you find yourself running around like a bog standard Mario. This in my eyes is a violation of the spirit of the challenge, and since you've got to pick up and toss these shells to proceed, this star is unfortunately impossible for us to get. Good thing we still have some Terra Stars we can get instead. Flip Switch Galaxy is no problem. Sweet Sweet Galaxy features, well, all this. It's not easy, but with enough precision, we can backflip our way to victory here. That lands us at 12 stars, just enough to unlock Battle Rock Galaxy. The main body of the first star's level is not too bad, even while crouching. Luring a bolt bill at the end is a wee bit annoying, but still very much possible. Battle Rock's second star is all about these bombs, which you pick up and then start running around normally with, just like the shells. And just like with the shells, I'm deeming this a violation of the spirit of the challenge. And just like that, the rest of Battle Rock's stars are off the table for us. We still need two more stars to unlock the fountain's Bowser level, and quite frankly, we are quickly running out of options. Luckily, one option we do have is Rolling Green Galaxy, which being a ball level, plays exactly as normal. We only need one more star to enter the next leg of our journey now. Unfortunately, we only have two options, and they're both speed-based. We either need to beat the Speedy Comet in Gouda Galaxy, or the Cosmic Clone Comet in Honeyhive Galaxy. I have my doubts that our Starbit hoarding strategy from Good Egg will be even fundamentally compatible with a Speedy Comet, so I guess we'll go for Honeyhive. So yeah, it's the Cosmic Clone Comet, which means a speed-based challenge, which obviously isn't very good for us, given that backflips are far from the quickest way to traverse in this game. It's not as bad as it could be, though. There are a lot of relatively straight shots here, which are at the very least easier to manage than constant turns. Additionally, the Cosmic Clone slows down quite a bit to backflip over the large cliffs. We, of course, don't have to hesitate when we clear these obstacles, which will often grant us the lead by the midpoint of the race. Unfortunately, without fail, the Cosmic Clone always catches up to and surpasses us in the final stretch. Every. Single. Time. A lesser man might conclude after such experience that this star is impossible. But not me. Because here's the thing just because we get past doesn't mean we've lost. All it means is that there's a wide open trampoline in front of us to take advantage of. And take advantage we do 
grabbing our 15th star. Bowser's Star Reactor is no pushover of a level. This last swamp was a bit tricky until you realize you can just backflip from the level beneath it, and then wall jump off of its face and land on top of it. A lot of the other obstacles look a lot scarier than they actually are. The Bowser fight at the end is a bit tricky. Not mostly due to his attacks, but more so because landing a hit on his burning tail requires a very specific approach that took some trial and error to figure out, especially with regards to the timing. What I ended up finding to be the optimal method was backflipping in the exact opposite direction he was running in, trying to cut him off. That part's pretty obvious. Really, it was the timing that was trickier to figure out. In my experience, the most success was had when I did my backflip right when Bowser started to appear over the horizon of the planet. You then want to make sure you spin specifically after you've landed. After following this strategy, I beat Bowser and unlocked the kitchen. Beach Bowl's first star is all focused on swimming, which our rules don't really change to a significant degree, and therefore isn't much of a problem. Beach Bowl's second requires that we get this golden shell to the coach. Obviously we can't walk about on land to transport the shell, but swimming with it should be fine, if a bit annoying due to the fact that ZL happens to be the brake button for shell swimming. Luckily, we were able to avoid drowning, and jump straight from the water to the coach's dialogue, which from my perspective, falls within our established rules. Beach Bowl's third brings us to the Stone Cyclone, which for the most part can be overcome with a bit of patience. It does however culminate in this jump around a thwomp, which certainly isn't the simplest maneuver to pull off. So yeah, finally another major galaxy we can get to all three main mission stars in. Let's hope Ghost of the Galaxy is as kind. The first star here teaches us that as long as we crouch, we're invulnerable to boos. Good to know. We also get the chance to become a boo, which I view as a completely kosher turn of events. The second star is a pole star based race and therefore poses no real threat to us. The third star features these explosive boos heavily, that yes, cause you to run around normally while using. This, in my opinion, falls under the same sort of category as the shells and the bombs. Therefore, we can't beat this level. Luckily, we can make up for it by grabbing Ghostly Galaxy's hidden star. That brings us to 23 stars, enough to unlock Bowser Jr.'s airship Armada. The level portion of the star is absurdly easy, and in no time we're facing down with the boss. A boss centered around picking up and throwing shells. So this is it then, huh? After threading that needle and skipping close to entire major galaxies, a mandatory boss fight against Bowser Jr. is really what's going to do us in? <sighs> Unless... What if it was possible to throw shells without compromising the integrity of our crouching? <laughs> but that's nonsense. As soon as you pick one up, Mario stands proud and tall before walking like a normal person. But if his feet weren't on the ground, he couldn't stand tall, could he? Couldn't walk about, and our crouching lifestyle would be preserved. Here's the thing, if you jump on a shell, you don't just fall through it to the ground like with literally every other power-up in the game. No, you bounce off of it while picking it up. I don't consider this state to be a violation of our rules, and so long as we throw the shell before we land, we will not be in violation of the rules. The execution of this strategy isn't all that complicated, really. Just stand on the bottom level of the deck where the bolt bills and cannons can't reach you, in front of the Koopa. When Bowser Jr. and the Koopa align, just backflip onto the Koopa, nab its shell, and throw it straight ahead. Now repeat this process five more times with a couple breaks to hunt down some Magic Koopas, and that is another grand star acquired. We now have access to the bedroom, and the first place we're headed there is Gusty Guard. Most of the first star is pretty simple. It, however, culminates in a bunny chase. All the difficulties that plagued us when chasing bunnies at the start of this challenge apply here as well. And this time, there's no conveniently placed pond for us to exploit. What we can do, after much trial and error, is exploit a change of perspective. If we chase the bunny into this hole, then we enter a 2D section which means we can shoot star bits at the bunny without knocking it away from us, and catch up to it with even just a bottle. That gives us another star. Star number two is again pretty straightforward until the final planet, where we have to fight Major Burrows. And quite frankly, the way this guy attacks so perfectly exploits the weaknesses inherent in our moveset 
Personally, I'd rather look elsewhere for stars if at all possible. One such star is the Luigi star from Good Egg Galaxy. And you know what? While we're in the area, let's easily grab Hurry Scurry Galaxy's star as well. We now have enough stars to unlock the next major galaxy in the bedroom, Freeze Flame Galaxy. The first star here opens with us having to catch a penguin. The chase can be made easier by destroying the boulders first, but even then the penguin is fast, goes around in a circle, and most annoyingly, switches which side of the planet he's on. Nevertheless, with extremely competent backflips, you can catch up to the penguin. Literally catching it, though, requires precision and luck with timing that I was just never able to achieve. Typically, when I would catch up, it would be when the penguin was on the opposite side of the planet. The penguin would then proceed to just turn around and slide the other way as soon as I had overtaken it. Another way one might theoretically try to tackle this challenge is by skating. You know, the intended way. Skating, of course, isn't possible to start while crouching, but it can be sort of cheated out by spinning with perfect timing right when you land a backflip. This would definitely allow us to catch the penguin, but in my opinion would also go against the spirit of the challenge. So we will refrain from this approach and instead look for stars elsewhere. One place that can give us a star pretty easily would be Bubble Breeze Galaxy, for obvious reasons. Now where else could we go? What about Space Junk Galaxy? I mean, think about it. If we were able to beat a shell-based boss in Bowser Jr. without breaking our rules, then perhaps a shell-based level is within our grasp as well. As it turns out, it is. The bouncing off the shell strategy is sufficient to get us to Camilla. Unfortunately, Camilla is arguably a harder boss than Bowser Jr. was. She even requires us to learn a new shell technique to beat her. Specifically, we have to spin while on the ground to start the process of attracting the shell to Mario. We then need to make sure we jump before the shell actually reaches us, ideally while facing toward Camilla so we can get a hit in. So yeah, it's a bit more involved than Bowser Jr., but still very much possible. I was going to do the third star next, but the comet decided to show up, so I guess that's what we're doing next. The comet is a speedy comet of the first star, which is very doable. The hidden star is a tiny bit more annoying than usual, in large part because the good old spin and kick is basically ineffective with the restrictions we have in place. It's not that big a deal, though. The third star features a boss fight against Tarantox. Our rules do limit us here in one key respect. They make it a lot harder for us to dodge the boss's attacks. One way to counter this is by using the sling pods to travel faster around the arena. This, however, doesn't work nearly as well during the second phase due to him shooting from his sides as well as his mouth. What you can do during the second phase is hit one of his weak points on the side, which stuns him long enough for Mario to get around behind him and win the fight. We then visit Bowie Base, which really doesn't pose a particular challenge to our crouch-only playthrough. That puts us at 33 stars, exactly enough to unlock Bowser's Dark Matter Plants. This level is pretty tricky, the platforms here are small and made up almost exclusively out of right angles, which means it's pretty easy to end up flirting with a ledge in a bad way and getting your crouch involuntarily cancelled. There's also this small part where theoretically you need to do a small jump to progress, which is something you can't really do when your only jumping options are backflips. And that's before we even talk about the boss fight. First problem. Two of the three major attacks Bowser uses in this fight causes your crouch to be cancelled, the fire breath and the spin attack. Compounding this unfortunate fact is that what I found to be the most reliable strategy for phases 2 and 3 was going to the exact opposite side of the planet while the fire breath was happening. This meant that yes, we were actually charging into the most fiery part of the planet. But hey, it was that or getting trampled, and I guess I chose the fire in that case. It can be avoided, but it's not easy. Then there's, of course, still the relative awkwardness of hitting Bowser's burning tail. Although I will say, by the time I had figured out whether or not this star was possible, I'd become pretty good at that part. Yeah, so basically, this took a while.
So apparently the final solution here was accepting getting hit by one of the shockwaves to allow you to have the right timing to backflip over or spin against Bowser during his final spin. Not choking after that isn't exactly easy, but in the end, we did it. And with as tough as that was, I can't help but feel confident that the worst of this challenge is probably behind us now. So let's go to the engine and tackle Goldleaf Galaxy, which features a bunny chase as its first star, come on! <sighs> of course. Well, the good news here is that there is actually water on this planet. The bad news is it's much less effective than it previously was, and most of it is locked behind a switch that only stays active for a short time. Again, star bits aren't of much use here, since more often than not, they push the bunny away from us. What did prove to be useful, though, was a bee power-up that you can bring from the previous planet. With the bee mushroom, what we can do is we can fly above the bunny, unnoticed, then dive down and nab the fluffy thing. Which, for those of you unacquainted, gets us the level star. The other two normal stars in Goldleaf are pretty simple to beat while crouching. Next, we visit Sea Slide Galaxy. In the first star, it takes a bit of effort to keep up with Guppy, but is ultimately possible. Getting back on the starting island without cancelling our crouch, though, is a bit annoying. Not impossible, mind you, just annoying. Next, we grab the hidden star from Goldleaf, which is extremely easy. Then, we attempt the hidden star from Bowie Base, which as it turns out, backflips are actually almost ideal for acquiring. After that, we try racing some penguins for the second star of Sea Slide. The issue is, this seems perhaps unwinnable without using a shell, and we are incapable of using a shell without constantly holding down the brake. I guess we'll be needing to look for stars elsewhere. On the topic of speed, I also gave the cosmic clone races in Goldleaf and Sea Slide the old college try. And while I haven't invested enough time and effort into them to be confident labeling them impossible just yet, let's just say for now that they don't exactly look promising. Unlike all three regular stars and the hidden star in Toy Time Galaxy. If you had told a past version of me that I'd end up saying what I'm about to, he probably would have sued you for defamation. But the fact that these levels so heavily utilized the Spring Mushroom means that we don't actually have much to worry about in them, and as a result, they go by quite easily. So, thank you Spring Mushroom. We only need one more star to unlock the next Bowser level and saving Luigi in Battle Rock is a pretty straightforward way to get it. The hardest part of Bowser Jr.'s lava reactor is actually the starting planet. That's because this bullet bill is a bit temperamental to guide to where you need it. The solution though was actually pretty straightforward. Just lure it through the most direct route, which as it turns out is across this gap, which yes, you can backflip and spin your way across. The boss fight itself is actually a complete pushover, which, if I'm being honest, is a very welcome change of pace compared to the previous Bowser levels. So we could go to the garden now, but first let's drop by Dusty Dune Galaxy, which until now it seems I've completely and unjustifiably neglected. The first part of the level is pretty simple, but then we get to this flowing sand slide, which if you step foot on, Mario will stand up in. Which I'm deeming as, and say it with me now, going, going against, against the, spirit the spirit of the, of the challenge. challenge. Unfortunately, I don't know of a way to get through this level while avoiding the flowing sand, so I guess Dusty Dunes will continue to be ignored, but now justifiably so. Instead, while we're in the area, let's handle Honey Climb, which is B-based and plays almost exactly like normal. On our way to the garden, I don't see a good reason not to get the gate's purple coins, which are quite time-consuming to collect, but not really difficult. The first galaxy we face from the garden is Dreadnought Galaxy. The first star here is just overall pretty tricky. In particular, this section is a trap. I found that if you use the bouncy creature, you will get shot by a cannon. Instead, you'll want to wall jump off the cannon, then spin. This Tower of Topmen is also pretty tricky due to the limited real estate and shifting floor. Additionally, this first Topman has to be dealt with pretty carefully, because if you get too close, the bombs will start chasing you, creating a great risk of either picking them up or getting blown up, neither of which are good for us. The star is possible, though. The second star is also generally tricky. It all culminates in this final barrage of cannons that, at first glance, seems nigh unavoidable. With the power of star bits, though, it can actually be quite effectively neutralized. The top maniac fight at the end of Star 3 is rather annoying, since jumping on one of the top men accompanying him is game over. Nothing we can't conquer, though. 
but can we conquer it in six minutes or less for the Speedy Comets? Yes, yes we can. Matter Splatter Galaxy is mostly about upwards movement and even features the Spring Mushroom. In other words, it's fertile ground for this challenge. Melty Molten Galaxy's Hidden Star requires a bit of thought and patience, but is certainly doable. Its first star seems very difficult given that its final challenge is so speed-based and takes place on a very curvy route, which our backflips aren't exactly great at. That is, until you discover this shortcut, which honestly I had no idea even existed until out of sheer necessity I tried it during this challenge. Learn something new every day, I guess. Melty Molten's second main star then presents us with some real difficulty. The way gravity works on this planet seems to prevent you from wall jumping up and onto the thwomps. Which is a problem for us, since that's normally our main way of getting around thwomps. Our standard backup of jumping around the thwomp is also unavailable here due to the fact that this is a 2D section. That just leaves going under, which waddling won't achieve for obvious reasons. As for backflips, I did manage it once, so it's definitely possible to get around at the very least this one. But then there's two more after it, which don't look any easier, so honestly, if we truly run out of options elsewhere, I guess we can come back to this, but for now, let's just move on to greener pastures. Like Deep Dark Galaxy, in particular the Hidden Star. Getting the Fireflyer to gain access to the rest of the level, while not impossible, is really annoying since backflips are really quite slow. If you feel so inclined, you can actually just go to the cannon and with the right timing and accuracy, you can just skip all the Fireflyer nonsense, which is what I did. Getting the Hidden Star does almost result in me drowning due to just how slow the shells are while you're breaking, but I didn't drown and was thus able to acquire the Hidden Star. We just need four more stars to be able to face Bowser. And while yeah, I guess we could try to get them from Deep Dark Galaxy, honestly, I think hitting some Hungry Luma Galaxies would probably be easier. First on the list is Sling Pod Galaxy, which is all about Sling Pods, and as such plays basically normally. Next up is actually going to be saving Luigi in Honey Hive, since I just got mail alerting me to his barrel, which is also extremely easy. Back in Hungry Lumaville, we take on Drip Drop Galaxy, which takes a long time because of the fact that we have nearly no mobility while swimming with the shells, which we need to use to kill the eels. We end up being forced to set up ambushes for the eels, which eventually works and grants us our 59th star. Finally, Boo's Boneyard Galaxy is a Boo Mushroom level, and as such is played as normal. That, my friends, is 60 stars gathered, enough to face Bowser in the center of the universe. So let us not delay, let's show Bowser the power of a crouching Mario once and for all. The opening of the level where the spotlights are is pretty simple, so long as you're patient. Then the three planets following can all be played in basically the same way and go down pretty easily. Then this next part with the space junk platforms is where things get interesting. If you want to get past the first part without the ground being pulled out from under you, waddling won't cut it. You'll need to backflip. Unfortunately, this spawns in some of the higher space junk platforms prematurely, meaning that once you've done the wall jumps, you're greeted by a second floor without a floor. No matter though, if you do a backflip, hit your head on the ceiling, and then do a spin just before you're lost to the vastness of space, you can reach the wall and start jumping off of it. Then for this next part, honestly, you can just relax. Given the gravity of the situation, backflips probably wouldn't give you much speed anyway, so just waddle along. Don't worry, it may look like the floor is surely going to disappear from beneath your feet, but before that happens, you'll get a nice damage boost from the fire bar, which luckily doesn't cancel your crouching. You could take a second damage boost as you leave the section, personally though, I prefer using a backflip here to preserve my health for the next section. Now we've made it to the big cylinder. The first major obstacle here is a thwomp, which I couldn't seem to get on top of. Underneath seems dubious at best, so the route I took for this obstacle was around, which often led to a bit of damage boost, which luckily again does not result in cancelling our crouching. Next up are these twin bullets, which are really annoying since they approach from above, which is the direction our only real evasive maneuver tends to take us, and as such often leads to predictable results. The silver bullet here is getting the bullets to collide with each other, which hopefully grants you enough time to get past the rest of the obstacle. We do have to face down with other bullets shortly thereafter, but these ones are much less of a problem due to our conflicts with them taking place on much more favorable terrain. Which means it's Bowser boss fight time. Our last fight with this guy was one of the hardest moments of this whole run. I wonder how we'll fare this time. 
Phase 1 features Bowser creating shockwaves, which aren't much of an issue, and then transforming into a boulder, which can be defeated by whacking him in the face. Which, even in our very low mobility state, is almost insultingly easy. In Phase 2, Bowser breathes fire and then pursues you as a spiky ball of death and destruction. Here's the thing though, if you place a tree directly between you and Bowser, the fire can't hit you, and then the shot you have to take on Bowser with the tree couldn't possibly be easier. This phase I think I actually am insulted by. But what about Phase 3, the reprise of the type of boss fights we've had against Bowser earlier in the game? Well yeah, what about it? It's objectively easier than the last time we faced him. I mean sure, he's got the spike ball move now, but that is actually way easier to avoid than the spin move he swapped out for it. So I guess what I'm saying here is that yes, we can beat Bowser while permanently crouching. And since we got here by permanently crouching, yes, it is possible to beat Super Mario Galaxy while permanently crouching, even under what I will say were actually probably pretty strict rules. If you stuck around this long, let's be honest with ourselves for a moment here. You liked this video, didn't you? I mean, why else would you be here? So if that's the case, then please, just press that like button already. Additionally, if you want to see some more challenge videos, then there are plenty on this channel for you to check out, including one on Super Mario Galaxy 2 and one on Mario Golf Super Rush. Or hey, if you just like Super Mario Galaxy content in general, you might consider checking out my Let's Play channel where I did a full Let's Play of it, and I'm currently playing some other games. And of course, if you want more of these sorts of videos to be in your future, then you will want to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. But anyways guys, until next time, I've been Simicraft, about to launch headfirst into the production of another one of these videos for you all to enjoy. Goodbye.